Hi, it's Saturday, March 17th, 2018, Sebastopol, California, and we are here to interview Alice. Hi. And Hi. Alice, what is your last name? Uh, Brunsman. Thank you. And I'm going to ask you a question about what was a happy memory of yours and what happened then? Um, most of my really happy memories are more recent. I don't really hold on to them for too long. Um, and I guess it's hard to pick just one. Um, almost every week I have happy memories working with PI because it's just a magical place. Working with PI, positive, positive images. images. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Alice, you can just comb your. Yeah, there's one that's stray. Okay, perfect. And, um, that's it. Uh, there's nothing you'd like to tell us about that's really specific that you could. Um, what do you mean? That you oh, were happy for the something was happening in your life. No, I don't even recently. I think I'm good. As you, as you think about um, childhood growing up, you becoming your own person and seeing your identity and your family. So, are there are there certain things given your growing identity of who you are, what your needs are? Did you see things that could have been supportive to you, or did you notice things that you would have liked to have a kind of support that was not in your family or your neighborhood or your school? Can you can you imagine that there were a grow that there was a growing consciousness in you about what you needed? Um, well, I didn't really become um, who I am now and who I wish I would have always been, which is who I am now, um, until around maybe 17, maybe 16. Um, just a lot of my life I spent kind of playing through the motions, acting, um, and I didn't really consider much like what I wanted to do. Um, and like in terms of my childhood um, and support, um, I wasn't a very social person as a kid. Um, I didn't really have um, many friends, if any, at a given time. Um, and like at home, um, my sisters were very supportive. Um, by the time I was like 15, they had all moved out because they're all a decent bit older than me. Um, and my parents, they try, um, I just, it's hard to explain, there's something about our relationship that does, doesn't quite fit. Um, like with my dad, um, there's been like some clear dysfunction there and I haven't talked to him since like October, I think. Um, and my mother, like we have a fairly good relationship and um, we can spend time around each other. Um, but in terms of like support, I just don't feel comfortable really opening up to her. So it, it wasn't really ever a part of our relationship. You feel that she had a different view of who she wanted you to be, so you don't feel? Um, definitely, for, for a long time. Um, not necessarily in terms of like my identity, um, because she was, and is, like, still fairly supportive of that. Um, but, like, in terms of my 
performance in school and like how I would act. She had um, kind of high expectations of who I should be and um, she wasn't really ever happy with anything less or at least didn't show it. Um, so that was just kind of okay. how it was. Um, did you have any, any role models outside of your parents, um, from friends or from school or church um, that had an influence on you, do you think? Maybe not as a young child, but I'd say like um, my first real um, role model or mentor was um, I ended up in uh, restorative justice, which is kind of like an alternative to probation. Um, and I met a guy named Chad Bulla there, and um, he's very wise um, and just understands the world in a way that I've learned to understand, um, but I didn't at all when I first met him. Um, mm -hmm. So he is my first mentor. That's nice that you met him. Mm -hmm. So what was his message um, that resonated for you? Um, I guess it's just the way of seeing the world in its more complicatedness. Um, seeing people as more than just like good people and bad people but like how complicated the people really are and how the line between good and evil is kind of more within each person than between groups of people. Um, and also the idea of um, helping people instead of punishing them or, mm -hmm. you know, seeing equality for all, all individuals. Right. But did you feel any of that when you were going through, well, high school or this restorative justice program um, that you were finally becoming, getting acknowledgement for the own goodness within you? Um, no, that, that kind of took a while. Mm -hmm. Um, it's hard to think of yeah. the way I perceived myself so long ago. Um, mm -hmm. um, um, how does um, your relationships and friendships now influence your identity? Um, quite positively. Um, it's really amazing for me um, to be around a group of people that, you know, celebrate individuality um, rather than like going against it, um, which is kind of the way people were as I was growing up. And um, recently things have just been changing so much because I get to think about like who I want to be rather than who I am. And your friends have helped you do that? Yeah. Okay.
And how have they helped you? Um, just by being there. Um, and, you know, setting an example, being who they are, um, no matter what anyone else thinks about it. share if you or your friends have been bullied and how did you react to that and how did it feel? Um, bullying was a really big problem for me in school. Um, I didn't really talk much. Um, I learned that I was on the um, autism spectrum at a fairly young age. Um, and while I didn't really know what that meant at the time, um, it kind of just really affected the way I interacted with people. And um, I was also um, like fairly scrawny and uh, my birth name is kind of unisex and um, I also had really long hair, much longer than this. Um, so it kind of made me a really good target for bullying. Um, so like verbally um, I would get made fun of for all sorts of things um, and Occasionally, it was also physical. Um, I have, um, it's not always clear memories. It usually comes back in nightmares um, that I get of like being pulled behind bushes and hit until I couldn't stand. Um, so it was fairly rough. To draw on your own strengths and to, given that that's some of your background, what do you draw on in your own, in your own sense of yourself and your own strength that inspires you to, even when it's a bad day or a bad week, there's something strong, strong in you. What, what is that? Try to characterize that strength in you. I guess, if you mean like resilience, yeah, um, sure. my life is very different than it used to be, um, and you know when I think about the issues I have now, they seem a lot smaller than the issues of the past. So, you know it's. I often think, like, if I got through those things, then I should hopefully be able to get through what I'm dealing with now. Do you think about your life and then you kind of can project that onto other young people in Sonoma County or Santa Rosa? Is there a way, there a vision or a, a, something that you can project that you feel like you're a part of to, to make the community or to improve the community? I feel that um, both amongst like adults and children all over the world, um, there's a strong sense of um, conformity and like you know there are even people out there who like feel it's their obligation to make sure everyone else is like conforming to a standard being normal and um, 
an important thing for me in changing that is to just show people how you can be whoever you want, be abnormal, and the world doesn't end, you know? It's fun to be weird. So um, many of us in this older group uh, came out when the division of culture was a very binary concept. You're lesbian or gay or straight. Those were like mm -hmm. the possibilities. Um, so many in your peer group are in embracing the concept of gender fluidity. Um, can you tell us what that means to you? Um, I don't really consider myself to be gender fluid, um, but I know a lot of people who are, and I think that's a really great thing to know people who have um, perspectives from both sides, or who simply like to stay in the middle. Um, I also love the fashion. Um, <laughs> like, sometimes I kind of like, think like, maybe I could be a bit fluid just because like, I love the idea of like, gender fuck clothing. Mm -hmm. um, and like, I want like to tinker with that, but I, I don't think I would be personally comfortable with wearing like masculine clothes along with feminine ones. Um, so what, <laughs> what is your style? How would you talk, um, describe your style of living or, or dressing at this point? Um, I guess something that's important to me is kind of like breaking down like the ideals of consumerism mm -hmm. and like I've learned that I prefer to have like like I like thrift store clothes and like clothes that I've gotten from various places because I like that my clothing has a story even if mm -hmm. I don't know that story you know it's something beyond being made in a factory and shipped to a store you know I can I can get things that were passed on through other people and they still work great mm -hmm. So are, are you doing anything with that creative impulse? Are you writing or um, um, doing any design work or anything like that? In terms of art, um, I'm primarily a painter. Mm -hmm. um, I work with watercolors, acrylics, or not watercolors, I'm sorry, um, acrylics, oils, um, some pencil and pastel mm -hmm. um, and something that I've really been working on getting into is the same kind of concept of keeping things in place so I um, I love getting the opportunity to just like take odd things sometimes things I even find in like scrap yards mm -hmm. and turn them into art because then it's not just something that was fabricated it's something that actually has a past and it's being you know changed and combined with other things to mm -hmm. become something new mm -hmm. what are your hopes or dreams for your future um, for my future, um, nothing big.
big right now. Um, you know, I hope to become more autonomous, um, to live on my own. Um, and I want to learn more. Um, that's something that's important for me. Um, lately I've been studying uh, concepts of like shamanism. Um, for a while I was studying like various religious concepts, mostly centered around Buddhism. Um, and I just want to understand the world and people more because I've found that the more you can learn, the more you can make educated choices. And I see a lot of people making choices that aren't, that like seem great and to them and their point of view, but aren't necessarily, I'm kind of wording this in a confusing way. Um, maybe an easier way of putting it is, um, see in Buddhism, um, one of the three origins of human evil is delusion. And what that means is that not all people are necessarily delusional, but a lot of people do hurtful things because they think they're doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. So my objective of learning more is to understand what is the right thing. I just wanted to go back to art because I know that you know you're working on the art jam. Could you just talk about the the healing power of art and how you you really embrace that? Um, yeah, for me, art in its many forms is um, first it's a part of the artist, um, and it's a way for you to express yourself and express things that can't really be put into words um, or can't be put simply. And um, I forget, and I'm probably gonna misquote this a bit, um, that when an artist sits down to paint, they are actually painting themselves. Um, and I believe that, that whenever you make a piece of art, you're reflecting a piece of yourself in that. And I think when people see art, if they really think about it and absorb it, they can take a part of that piece with them. Thanks. Uh, the one that I that I really want to ask you is um, when people watch this and they're going to click on the URL and they're going to listen to all these, what's one takeaway from, from experiencing you the last few minutes? What's one takeaway you want somebody to, to know, to learn, to have experienced from you that you would that you would say? That's a big question. <laughs> um That is, a, can you like give me an example? I, I don't understand how to well, answer that. You, what's one thing you want people to know from watching, from watching this the last few minutes? What's one thing you want people to know when they are, when they turn off the screen? Um, 
Well, I have one thing I've taken away from what you've said, and that's the importance of scrap material. <laughs> <laughs> it is quite uh, important. Or is there anything you want to say that you haven't shared already? No. Um, just the values of values of things that people ignore, sort of. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that resonates with you at all. Yeah, and it's more than just things that people forget, you know. There's also an incredible value in life that people forget. Um, both human and creatures. Um, it's easy to see the world as like big groups or just one amalgamate of the other. And I think that that type of thinking is really a big part of what's destroying the world is that I think people should start learning to use their empathy um, even if the one they're affecting isn't right in front of them. Thank you very much. Thanks. 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 Thanks.